honor to the great men of God that have come before me, done such an excellent job. And then I certainly give honor to those who will come after me this afternoon, then tonight. And uh, if I just get through this, there are those that come after me whose shoelaces I'm not worthy to tie. And uh, so if you can just endure me, you will be blessed here in a little while. I want to say to Pastor and Sister Mayo in this church, what an exceptional job you guys are as host. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you for the hospitality. Thank you for everything that you do. This does not come cheap, and it doesn't happen without great sacrifice. And I think we are to give the Mayos and Cornerstone another great big hand of appreciation. I am delighted today to have my wife here with me and my youngest daughter, Annabelle, who happens to be the boss. And we're just thankful today. Uh, she doesn't always get to travel with me and to have her is a privilege and then to have my daughter kind of the cherry on top missing my other son and daughter there at home love them love our local church family and uh, many friends here today and brothers in the Lord but I do have a uh, good friend that flew out yesterday evening having to return uh, because of obligations immediately following the service today but it is so good to have Brother Austin Garrett here, Summit 2016, and a fine young man, preached tremendous revival in our church, and I'm glad that he is here with us today. I feel that God has put a very specific and very direct word on my heart for this service today, and praying and seeking God for direction. The Lord drew my attention to these passages of scripture it's not something I've rehearsed or practiced in our home pulpit because I felt it was a direct word from God for this meeting and I have felt confirmation of that even today in prayer and I know that God's going to help me and I trust that you wonderful people are going to help me for the next few minutes today as I obey God in the book of Mark Mark writing his narrative the biography the way he witnessed the events in Mark 16 and verse number 14 the Bible says afterwards speaking Jesus has resurrected he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not Everybody shout, they believed not. 
they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen being skeptic and critical as is old as the apostles themselves and he said unto them go everybody shout go go ye into all the world and preach the gospel not your opinion not your candy sticks not your personal convictions go preach the gospel unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned we absolutely positively believe today that except a man is born of the water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God we believe that because the Bible says shall it's definitive it declares but the shalls do not stop there and so if we taught if we are to embrace the shall of the new birth we must also embrace and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover do you know you can receive healing in this house today it doesn't matter what infirmity you possess or how long you've carried it there's an apostolic anointing and authority that's given to the apostolic church we can lay hands on you and you shall be healed the Bible says so then after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached everywhere and they didn't just preach the Lord working with them confirming the words with signs following amen Acts chapter number one just for the sake of understanding placing Luke begins to write the former treaties have I made O Theopolis of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen I want to read to you a definition today and then give you my title and allow you to be seated but the word repeat simply means to occur again in the same form or fashion the word repeat means an action event or another thing that occurs and is done again according to the original everybody shout original according to the original pattern or occurrence and I have stepped to this sacred desk before you wonderful people today not only to preach to summit 2016 but to declare to our entire movement it is time for a repeat it is time for a repeat would you lift your hands and let's ask God to move in this house in such a special way God we need your help I need your anointing God I pray that you would hide me behind the cross I pray that your word would speak through me order my steps as I preach to your people let them hear not mine but your voice today in Jesus precious name we pray God bless you you may be seated here for the next few minutes this morning 
It was upon the completion of his biography recording the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that Luke the physician picks up his pen again and dips it in ink and he begins to record the actions of that inaugural church. It is not just some fictitious story that we rehearse and we preach and we try to generate excitement from. But when you read through the book of Acts, you are reading as Luke writes and as Luke puts on paper the actions. Everybody shout actions. The actions of that first church. That is why it is called the book of Acts. We see the apostles and we see the church in action. Let me remind you today that God's church has always been a church of action. It's not meant to be idle. It's not meant to be stagnated. It was never meant to embrace, let's just hang on and get through it until Jesus comes back mentality. You are a part of a victorious church. You are a part of the church that is built on the foundation of the prophets, of the apostles, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. Can I tell you in 2016, the church should be in action. We we should be witnessing miracles. We should be witnessing signs and wonders. There should be a confirmation of who we say we are and what we say we are about. This, this book of action, Luke begins to record and write it, no doubt with great excitement. We see how that for 28 chapters, the narrative of Luke records the acts of the apostles. How that first the apostles with that original 120. And then as it begins to spread, how that they both embrace and fulfill. It was not enough just to embrace and to believe, but they had to put into practice the promises and prophecies uh, given to them by God himself. Uh, I want to remind you that just as it was their mission and commission, just as it was something that they had to embrace and put into practice, uh, so is it in 2016 uh, at Summit Conference right here in Spokane, Washington. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if we are to be the church of the living God, we can't just preach about miracles. We can't just embrace that God is a miracle worker. We can't just believe that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. But we've got to get beyond the embracing. And we've got to get into the acting. It's not enough just to have faith. It's time we act upon our faith. We've got to do more than just preach and get a response from the pew. It's time that we... We witness it for ourselves. <laughs> Chapter number one. We see them as they seek the promise. Chapter number two. We see as they receive and embrace the promise. And then for the next 26 chapters... We see as they fulfill and they spread and facilitate adding to the church such as should be added. And I've come to preach to you today. It's time for a repeat. It's time that we receive the promise. Embrace the promise. See it fulfilled in our lives. And then go tell somebody else about it. And allow them to receive the promise. Embrace the promise. And go tell somebody else so that they can receive that. I'm telling you, it's time for another book of Acts revival. It started with a book of Acts and a church in action. And it's time for a repeat in 2016. 
I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. The devil is a liar. We've sat complacent and with our backs in the corner for way too long. We've been intimidated, afraid to step out, but we've got the power. We've got the power for ye shall receive power. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You shall pray and speak with new tongues. You shall preach and there be a change in the lives and in the culture of the world. I've come to remind you the church is still the answer. The church is still the cure-all. The church is still the escape. And somebody's got to embrace it. Somebody's got to yield to it. And somebody has to become action again. I'm going to hurry and get out of the way, so let me be brief. In going through these actions, in chapter number three, we see a couple of apostles with empty pockets, but freshly having embraced the promise, they speak to a beggar, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. But such as I have, I give unto thee. I'm not hiding it. I'm not just preaching about it. I'm not just saying I believe it can happen one day. But I'm going to put it in action. He said I could have it. And then I could give it. And so I'm going to say, if he gave it to me, he can anoint me to help it be given to you. We see Mark 16 coming to fruition in the beginning. Acts chapter 3, the healing of that crippled beggar. In chapter 4, we see great boldness come over Peter, John. As they preach Jesus. And they make it very clear. That the works that are being done. Are not only through the preaching of his name. But faith in his name. It's not enough for your preacher to preach about it. Precious saint of God. Somewhere you've got to just quit clapping your hands on Sunday about it. And you've just got to quit running the aisles on Sunday night about it. And you've got to say I'm going to see it happen. I'm not just going to hear the preaching about it. I'm going to put it in practice. And have a testimony for myself. They were not ashamed of the name. They were not ashamed of the name because they would preach unashamedly. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We see boldness begin to transpire and play out. By chapter number 8, Simon the sorcerer has not only been baptized, but he's watching the apostles and the saints of God in action. And it creates a hunger in him, though he is misconstrued and what to do to get what they have. He witnesses something so prolific and so powerful that he says, I'm willing to buy it. I'm willing to give whatever I've got to give because I want whatever you have it's time for a repeat it's time in your city it's time in your community that instead of you always having to seek out somebody and try to convince them they see your actions they hear the testimonies from your congregation and they show up and say we heard if we're sick we can be healed if we're bound we can be delivered if we're in bondage we can be set free. I've come to tell you, Summit, it's time for a repeat. It's time for an old fashioned book of Acts revival. The Ethiopian official is so impacted. He says, Here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Chapter 9, we see the conversion of Saul. Acts chapter 10, the Gentiles are 
crafted him. Chapter 14, more miracles. Chapter 16, devil worshipers and idolaters receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And at midnight, uh, they're just in action again. Uh, at midnight, uh, being oppressed, uh, being confronted because they were not popular with their message uh, concerning the culture of their time. Uh, they didn't let it back them in a corner. They didn't sit down and have a pity party. Uh, but at midnight, uh, they had a prayer meeting uh, and then they had a praise session. Uh, and when they had a prayer meeting uh, and a praise session, uh, suddenly uh, there was a shaking uh, and the chains fell off. Uh, the I'm telling you, it's time for a repeat. It's time for some prayer meetings. It's time for some praise sessions to facilitate liberty, deliverance, and freedom in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you, they, they were so anointed and emboldened and empowered by the Holy Ghost that by chapter 17... <laughs> they say, oh no, <laughs> oh no, here they come, and it's them that have turned the world upside down. Uh, chapter 19, there was such an anointing, you hear me, uh, it's not just a narrative, a fictitious story uh, to try to provoke response in 2016. Uh, but when the church uh, really operates uh, and is in action like the church is supposed to be, uh, there was such an anointing flowing through the ministry uh, and through the saints of God uh, that handkerchiefs uh, were anointed and sent out. Uh, and they that received them uh, were healed. Uh, it is still the will of God. For there to be a demonstration uh, of the miraculous. Uh, it's time uh, for a repeat. This is the shouting part. I'm going to get to what God gave me here shortly. Chapter number 20. The dead are being raised. And at the all too soon abrupt ending of Luke's story, the church has not been diminished. Its power has not been lost. Because as if to just put the exclamation mark, Paul shakes off that serpent into the fire and revival explodes all over again. It is time for that same action to occur in this house in the Northwest and all over the world in 2016. But the only way that there can be a true repeat of something is for the original pattern to be followed. For the original action to reoccur. And I'm afraid that in 2016, we have become more of an Ezra chapter 3 assembly rather than a book of Acts assembly. In Ezra chapter 3, and thank God for people who were willing to work. The Bible says they get the foundation laid again. And there's a group of people who didn't know it like it was in its original form. And they're excited about what's happening. They're excited about what's taking place. They're excited about what's going on. But there was a generation of that had seen the very first pattern. Uh, they had seen the original foundation. Uh, 
and that generation steps back. And while a new generation was excited with a touch, there was an old generation that stood back weeping because they remembered what it was like in its original state. Yes, this is beautiful. Yes, this is motivating. Yes, this is something I want to be a part of. And thank God. But there were some elders that says as good as you think it is, there's something better. There's something bigger. There's something with more power. I do not want to be confrontational today, but I do want to tell you why I feel that we are more aligned with Ezra chapter 3 than Acts chapter 1 through chapter number 28. It's because these new generational builders, they had perfected their praise. They had perfected their music. They were talented beyond measure. But when the curtain and the veil was thrown, there was no power to back up their perfection. There was no anointing that was falling on their praise. It was shallow. Oh yeah, it felt good while they were in the moment. It felt good while they were dancing around, singing, well, look what the Lord has done. But there was some priest standing by that they remembered the power falling so strongly that the musicians couldn't play music. The singers couldn't sing. The preachers couldn't preach. And they were screaming, we need a repeat. We don't need to settle for this. We don't need to be happy because of where we're at. We need the glory in its purest form. We need demonstration in its original fashion. I love the revival reports I'm hearing I love the church growth even in our local community that I'm seeing but let me not become comfortable with where I'm at because I failed to embrace the wisdom of the apostle when he said don't compare yourselves among yourselves and I'm happy with the 30 that's been added this year Because I compare myself with others that have only seen 15 added this year. And I say, oh, we must be doing something right. And I get through preaching and two receives the Holy Ghost. We baptize three that come on the vans. And if I'm not careful, I will become satisfied. And I'm I'm not minimizing anything. But I'm talking to you about the original pattern. The same message that I preach that provokes people to repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name in the infilling of the Holy Ghost uh, is not new. Uh, It's the message that Peter preached uh, in the inaugural church. uh, And yet when he got through, uh, there were 3,000 that were added. Uh, I'm thankful for the three uh, But it's time we quit settling. It's time we quit being complacent. It's time we quit comparing ourselves among ourselves. And get back to the pattern. Get back to the original plan. And see the original results. You you just forgive me. Let me be me today. Brother Urshan will clean all this up. But I, I, I get so happy if I can just get 20 out in the aisle on Sunday night. I mean, because after all, they've been serving God long enough. I mean, just, just, just get up there and talk to us, Pastor. Don't, don't push us. We don't feel like getting out in the aisle. We're too satisfied to run a lap. Leave that for them new people then. And as a pastor, I get excited on those Sunday nights when after pushing and priming and the singer singing till they're hoarse and me exhorting until I'm drenched. 
half the congregation to respond. And it's easy to go somewhere and see those same things. And only a third of the congregation to respond. And me say, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't push them quite as hard because it could be like down there at so-and-so's. But when I get to the original pattern, it wasn't 30 of the 120. It wasn't 50 of the 120. It wasn't 80 of the 120. It wasn't 119 of the 120. But the Bible says, uh, cloven tongues, uh, like as a fire, begin to fall. Uh, and they were all, uh, every one of them. Uh, and it provoked such a response uh, that the observers and the bystanders uh, said, look at the way they're acting. Uh, they must be drunk. Uh, and let me remind you for a repeat, just like the original, uh, before they ever asked, what shall we do? Uh, they looked at the response of the pew uh, and said, what meaneth this? Uh, there's something powerful uh, when a church uh, gets lost uh, in the presence of God. We need a repeat. Uh, we need a repeat. Uh, and it needs to start right here today. Uh, Summit 2016. Why can't somebody be healed? Why can't somebody be baptized? Why can't somebody talk in tongues? Why can't somebody be delivered from depression? Why can't somebody be set free from suicidal spirits? Why can't generational curses be broken? It's time. It's time. It's time. I'm going to tell you, you can receive a healing right now in Jesus' name. There's an anointing in this house. You can receive deliverance right where you stand. You may have been in and out, in and out, in and out, up and down, up and down. There's enough anointing in here to ground you, solidify you. This is the gospel of hope. This is the gospel of deliverance. This is the gospel of peace. The Come on, I'm not through, but I want you to just join up with somebody. Uh, and I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's time for a repeat. Come on, I'm not stopping anything, but give yourself 30 more seconds, and then I've got to move on. Uh, there's a demonstration uh, trying to help solidify what I'm getting ready to say to you. Uh, you can have it. Uh, we can see it repeated. Uh, you can have it at Summit, uh, and you can have it in your local assembly. Uh, it's time. Uh, it's time. Uh, it's time. Come on, come on one more time in unison. Lift your hands high. Raise your voice loud. Somebody shout the name that is above every name. Somebody shout the name that is above every name. Somebody shout the name that is above every name. Because in that name uh, shall be deliverance, uh, shall be healings, uh, shall be the miraculous. Now you are to give God a dance right now for what he's doing in this house. You are to get beside yourself in reverence and honor of the presence of God.
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it in my heart. I feel it moving across this house. There's victory here today. There's deliverance here today. There's peace that passeth understanding while I preach the word of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 come on, don't worry about the program, don't worry about the time, I'm not through, you're not through, God's not through, Come on, one more time, every hand in this house, let it be put together. Every voice in this assembly, let it be raised to shout and triumph. If you're going to do it, do it right. If you're going to praise, do it accordingly to the original pattern. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Don't just give him a patty cake. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. You may think I'm crazy and I may be. I was raised in the country. It's taught as a kid, don't plow a wet field. I've preached enough to know when it gets like this, more times than not, you should just let it go. But I feel like what has happened is God has prepared us to hear a word that he has given me for this meeting. Would you indulge me for just a few moments? See, to have a repeat, you have to follow the original pattern. And as God began to put this on my heart and I began to dig, there were some things that occurred over and over and over again. And I realized to have a repeat. In the action and in the miraculous, I must have a repeat in the plan and in the discipline. Because one of the first things I noticed is before prophecy ever come to fulfillment, there first had to be a unity among the believers. It didn't matter what cards you carried. It didn't matter who you paid dues to. It didn't matter who your pastor was. It wasn't about, well, I got to stay away from there because they don't just preach it like this. And I can't go over there because I might see something that don't. Before the book of Acts could ever unfold. There had to be a people that was reminded, you are one body. Because you are called with the hope of just one calling. Because there is only one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. 
Let me tell you what further revival. They were fellowshipping. Uh, they were breaking bread daily. Uh, and the Bible says, and God added to the church daily. Uh, such as should be added. Uh, I'm not talking about biblical doctrines. Uh, there's no being, no compromise uh, in this truth. Uh, but somewhere we've got to put beside petty issues uh, and recognize uh, we're a last day church uh, in a lost and dying world. World, uh, and we've got to come together uh, for a repeat of what happened uh, on the day of Pentecost. I mean, let me tell you, let me tell you why I can preach this. Because God has whipped James Wesley. God has worked things out of my spirit. I've, I've messed up friendships. In stupidity, I've, I've allowed distance and disconnect to become prevalent between me and some. And Brother Bo, I read the reports of what's happening in their assemblies. And I see the way that they're being furthered. And I, I get to thinking... When did I get so stupid to buy into the lie that these are my people rather than God's people? You might be the overseer of your local assembly and you do have an obligation to protect. But sir, you also have an obligation to connect. You couldn't find a more diverse group than the 12. And we wait around on, on getting people perfected before we pursue the promise. And we forget that in the church that Jesus himself pastored. One of them was a fighter. Two of them we call sons of thunder. One of them we can't speak his name without adding doubting to it. One we preach about is just a straight devil and betrayer. I'm not talking about in the church that your pastor pastors. I, I'm talking about in the church that Jesus Christ himself handpicked. Uh, yet when they came together in one mind uh, and one accord, uh, suddenly uh, there came a sound uh, and it was from heaven. Uh, we've got to begin to share vision again. Uh, and that is to take the whole gospel uh, to the whole world. Uh, if I can't get there, let me help you get there. And if you can't get there, help me get there. We've got a world to reach. They were sensitive to the Spirit. Over and over and over and over and over. The happenings in the book of Acts would have been missed. If people would have went based on their own feelings and intuitions. The Gentiles would have never been preached to. If Peter would have had it his way. But that's what prayer is. It's praying through your will. Into the place of nevertheless not my will but thy will. And it's praying until you get past your preconceived ideas and your little prejudice and your little way of thinking. Uh, and you get the revelation. Uh, if I called it clean, uh, it's clean. Uh, I didn't call you to qualify, Peter. I called you to preach. Uh, get down to Cornelius' house uh, and preaching the gospel. Uh, I'm telling you, they're not just snotty nose, tear up everything, bus kids. Uh, they're souls. Uh, they're not just a different culture on the back side of the track their souls God didn't call you to decide who gets in and who stays out God called you to preach 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 preach, 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 preach. Let us not forget on the day of Pentecost, uh, there was devout men uh, from every nation uh, and every tongue. Uh, the gospel is all inclusive. Uh, it's for the world, uh, not just for me. I 
I'm hurrying. I'm closer to being through than you think. Forgive me, Brother Urshan, for taking this much time. Let me tell you, a spirit of giving always consumes a church in action. Because when you get busy and wrapped up in kingdom things, you lose focus on worldly things. When you get focus, focused on kingdom things, it's not about what kind of suit you'd wear to conference. But it's, I wonder if so-and-so could be blessed if instead of buying this new suit, I bought them a bus ticket or a hotel room. I'm not talking to you about what's pleasing to me. I'm just talking to you about the original pattern. When they received the gospel, it so impacted them that they went and sold everything. And then this certainly contradicts 2016 church mentality. But they brought the money. And they did not take it to a church board. They did not give it to a church trustee. They did not put it in an account that had to have 16 signatures for anything over $200. They said, we've done our part. Now you're going to be judged for doing your part. And we trust the messenger as much as we trust the message. Before there can truly be Book of Acts revival, there has to be a renewed trust uh, in the handling finances uh, by the pastor of your local assembly. Uh, I'm telling you, God's way uh, is for you to give, and then God will give back to you. Uh, but it's the order of God uh, for the pastor to delegate funds uh, where they're needed. Uh, God help me. Uh, did I get so consumed uh, that I recognize uh, my part? is to give uh, that control with spirit. I'm telling you there's a pressure to conform. I understand we've got IRS. I understand we've got big government. But that's not really who binds us up. It's controlling saints that have lost sight of the mission. And I pray to God, Brother Burgess, we never lose our tax exemption. But tax exemption is an American thing, not a Jesus Christ thing. Because they asked Jesus about taxes and thank God for the loopholes, but he didn't show them any loopholes. He said, I'll tell you how to pay taxes. You just go fishing. If the IRS takes away our tax exemption, uh, we just need to win some more people. Because upon this rock, God's going to build his church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. We can render unto Caesar what is Caesar's uh, and still have the money to buy a bus. Uh, still have the money to buy van gas. Uh, still have the money to buy Sunday school snacks. Uh, this isn't America's church. Uh, this is God's church. Uh, it's not governed by the affairs of man. Uh, it's governed by the affairs of God. I don't know why, but I feel like preaching to a afraid pastor. Uh, you need to quit letting bind you in the pulpit. Being afraid of my would be taken away. Uh, God will give uh, and give uh, and give uh, as long as you're following the pattern. Oh, this this close to being done point sounds good. That close to being done stuff. But this is something that has so burdened me. If we're not careful. When we start talking about revival. When we start talking about. Book of Acts harvest. Our minds immediately go. To virgin soils. 
in faraway places. And he said, let me tell you about revival. When we preach revival for the whole world, Spokane, Washington is a part of the whole world. See, we can forget as the musicians come to speed me up. We can forget that when God does the miraculous, He does not just send the Holy Ghost to empower the Virgin to bring forth the Savior. But He says, I've got to have a forerunner. And instead of just incubating the womb of a virgin, at the same time he sends an angel to the womb of an aged Elizabeth that seems past the years of childbearing, seems nothing but just a little old home mission work in the middle of a burnt over field. Jesus in his infinite wisdom, said, no, I'm going to come and anoint the virgin, but I'm also going to come and give child to the aged. I'm going to tell you, if there can be a thousand soul revival in Africa, there can be a thousand soul revival in America. We need, to, we need to go to virgin territories. Huh? But there's some Elizabeths in this house. Huh? God's wanting to impregnate you huh? with the greatest revival huh? you've ever encountered. Huh? But you've got to seek it. You've got to knock for it. You've... I'm I'm not going to preach to the elders at this moment. I'm going to plead with the elders at this moment. Let me remind you that being an elder is not just simply based on age. It's experience and faithfulness and reputation. I want to plead with our elders here today and any that would be hearing my voice on Holy Ghost Radio. And any others that I could personally come in contact with. For there to be an absolute repeat of a book of Acts in 2016. Elders have to be willing to be elders. It's not comfortable because a lot of times it's confrontational. But I'm telling you, there's a vacuum in Pentecost of aged men that'll confront a successful preacher such as Peter and say, that's not how you was acting when you was preaching down there. That's not what you was saying when they opened their pulpit up to you over there. Oh, please do not feel as if this is a rebuke because I know to rebuke not an elder and I'm trying to treat you as carefully and as much like a father as I can. But there's some of us that can never experience the revival God wants us to have if you're not willing to tell us the hard things. Because I'm going to tell you, at 36 years old, I love to preach. And it's easy to get carried away when a crowd's responding like this. This is a very transparent moment right now. But it's easy to get caught up in the hype and in this anointed flow. And people making you feel like you're ten feet tall and bulletproof. And we can start pandering to people's feelings. And being this way over here and. Tough as nails and mean as a snake. And 
come over here and stand. And See, Peter wasn't, Peter wasn't out of character. He was in character. Because from the day that Jacob first gave the name, he said, you're unstable. You're wishy-washy. And it takes a signal. It takes an elder to say, I love you. So I got to tell you this. I'm not trying to hurt you and I'm not trying to. But you're leading people. Let me tell you, the job of the elder is to lead young leaders so that we properly lead the followers. And I've watched too many things self-destruct, Brother Mayo, including in the lives of young men that I love so dearly. Because an elder would say, I just don't think I'm going to get involved. When did you get to decide what you get involved in? Paul, you may not like what I'm giving you to write, Timothy. But you're just the messenger. And you better start writing. I wonder what kind of shipwreck there would have been. If that elder wouldn't have come to Peter and said, mm, not here, Pete. I wonder what kind of shipwreck there would have been if there wouldn't have been an aged elder to get involved in what everybody else thought was just carelessness and say, wait, don't crucify him just yet. If it's not of God, and if it is of God, it'll stand. I'm not just speaking for me today. I've had hours and hours of conversations with my contemporaries. And we're hungry for aged men to make sure we get it right. <laughs> listen, I don't know why I'm saying all this, but listen to me. We don't invite you to our churches because we feel sorry for you and we're trying to show you some respect. We invite you because in Diggins, there's some things as a 36-year-old young man, I can't say. But you can come and step to the pulpit with that gray hair. And the 45 years of ministry backing up what you're preaching. And you can unleash a move of the Holy Ghost that I can spend 20 years we need elders to be elders because we need a book of Acts revival. I don't have time. I'm through. But they were focusing on preaching Jesus. It's sad in some places when there's a better response over a mentioning of a colored pair of socks. Than there is when somebody gets up and quotes Acts 2.38. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let me remind myself, my peers, my contemporaries. It's not our duty to pander to the crowd we're with. It's our duty to preach the gospel to the world. I'm going to tell you, there shouldn't be a pressure in the pew to pander to you. It should be just like it's been here today when we start preaching Jesus. Don't let the world dumb down your response to preaching. Way back in the Old Testament, the Bible says that Ezra, he stood above the people behind the pulpit made of wood and he opened up the law and he began to preach and as he began to preach the people the Bible says this they stood to their feet they clapped their hands and they shouted amen 
I'm telling you, it's the responsibility of the pew to respond to the word from the pulpit because it's when we connect. It's when we connect. It's when we connect. It's when I preach and you preach back. It's when your pastor preaches and you respond that there is a hunger birth in the hearts. talking to a dear friend of mine late last night we was on our way back from a time of recreation we was talking about the way that we have church and I thought I thought The way we have church shouldn't be the exception. In the book of Acts church, it should be the standard and the rule. In the book of Acts church, there's still a radical response to the presence of God. I hope we haven't become so professional and we're so satisfied with a little bit of glory we feel when some sweet sister does a little 360 that we forget that what birthed some of the greatest times in our movement was when there were people that were rolling on the floor and they weren't concerned with what the bystander was thinking people stood outside mocking and laughing until Something got a hold of them. And then, trying to get through quicker than this, but I saved this for last because because I wanted to justify me taking this long. But I'm telling you, we don't just have ADD people anymore. We have an ADD society. We can't get what's happening right now because we're so focused on what some happened for somebody else a minute ago and what's going to happen for somebody else in the next 30 seconds. But if there is to be a book of Acts repeat, the people of God must re-embrace the lost ministry of tarrying. On the day of Pentecost, they didn't say, okay, Brother Peter, you've preached 57 minutes and 32 seconds, and we like John better, and he's coming up next. No, they were holding a promise. And the price of that promise was to get somewhere and get focused until, until. Not until you got tired of it. Not until you was ready to move on and do something different. Not until you responded to that one and so you was ready to hear the next one. No, there was something that settled on them. That said in Mark 16, Jesus said we could have this. All we had to do was be hungry enough for it. To tarry until. If you're hungry for a repeat today, I want you to lift your hands and I want you to lift your voice right now. Holy and I want you to begin to Spirit, talk to the Lord. Fill this room. Come on, there's a rich, wonderful adornment. of glory, sweet perfume. I'm telling you. Bible symbols. Symbolic objects, the rainbow, a symbol of God's covenant. A stairway, a symbol of the way to God. Thunder, lightning, clouds, and smoke, symbols of God's majesty. Thunder, a symbol of God's voice. 
trumpets, a symbol of God speaking. The pillar of cloud and fire, a symbol of guidance. A throne, a symbol of God's glory. Dry bones, a symbol of spiritual death. White hair, a symbol of wisdom. The wind, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Fire, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Stars and lampstands, symbols of God's ministers. A signet ring. A symbol of authority. Arrows. Symbols of God's judgments. A scepter. A symbol of God's rule. The capstone. A symbol of preeminence. A rock. A symbol of stability. The human body, a symbol of interdependence. Grass, a symbol of human frailty. Symbolic creatures, the serpent, a symbol of Satan's subtlety. Locus, a symbol of God's judgment. Beast. Symbols of earthly kingdoms. A dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. A lamb, a symbol of Jesus Christ's sacrifice. Symbolic actions, breaking a jar, a symbol of the destruction of Jerusalem. The cursing of a fig tree, a symbol of judgment. Washing hands, a symbol of innocence. Being thirsty, a symbol of spiritual need. Baptism, used for salvation and a symbol of cleansing. The Lord's Supper, a symbol of union with Christ. Anointing, a symbol of empowering by God's Spirit. Harvesting, a symbol of Judgment Day. Tearing garments, a symbol of anger and sorrow. Spitting, a symbol of contempt. Shaking off dust. A symbol of rejection. Sitting in sackcloth and ashes. A symbol of repentance. Lifting of hands. A symbol of prayer. Covering the head. A symbol of submission. Symbols expressing God's nature and character. God's face, a symbol of his presence. God's arm or hand, a symbol of his power. God's eye, a symbol of his awareness. God's ear, a symbol of God's listening. God bless you. Thanks for watching.